My name is Kate Timms, and today I'm going to be talking to you about extracellular vesicles, or EVs, derived from urine. One of the most exciting fields of EV research is the hunt for biomarkers to help diagnose, track, and even predict disease. However, despite being easily the most accessible biofluid, there are several important considerations for the use of urine for EV biomarker studies that are relevant right through from initial discovery to the clinic. One of the biggest considerations is reproducibility. Reproducibility in small cohorts of discovery studies is even more important. These studies are at increased risk of missing promising biomarkers due to greater variability in the data. When there are fewer participants, their individual differences will have a greater impact on the collective data, thus increasing variance and decreasing the ability to identify true changes between groups. The same is true of variants introduced by EV isolation methods with low reproducibility. Increasing the sample size and using a method which has high reproducibility will help to reduce the noise in the data. Strict inclusion and exclusion criteria are also important. Many factors from sex to diet to infection can impact upon urine concentration and composition. These factors and many more should be considered when determining study criteria. A recent position paper by the Urine Task Force of the International Society of Extracellular Vesicles recommended the use of a dipstick to aid with assessing sample quality based on factors such as urine pH. After reproducibility, the second consideration for optimal urine collection parameters, whilst the ideal collection parameters have not yet been determined for EV studies, you may consider using the first urination of the day, as it's generally considered to be the most concentrated. It should be noted that EV content may even differ between first and second urination, meaning that it is important to be consistent within studies and between them to ensure reproducibility. Then there are the considerations for pre-processing. Whole cells should be pelleted and removed using centrifugation. For preference, this should be done before storage to prevent further EV generation outside of the body, though with participants or patient self-sampling, this is often impossible. Aside from the removal of whole cells, the second most important processing consideration is uromodulin. Uromodulin is an abundant urine glycoprotein polymer which can trap EVs, preventing their isolation. The majority of uromodulin can be removed by centrifugation without significant loss of EVs, and protocols in the literature commonly report around 2000 G for 30 minute centrifugation. Reducing conditions can also be used to disrupt the polymer and help free EVs and prevent contamination in EV isolates. However, reducing conditions were shown to impact upon protein marker detection by Western blot, likely by changing protein conformation. In this study, tunable resistive pulse sensing, TRPS, was subsequently used to measure EV concentration and size. While centrifugation for uromodulin removal does not lead to significant loss of EVs, some EVs are lost. Therefore, when the goal is to accurately measure size and concentration of EVs, reducing conditions are likely preferable. Removal of uromodulin using centrifugation is likely best for functional studies or those involving protein analysis, as reducing conditions may impact upon the structure of EV membrane proteins. However, both should be trialled in your hands to identify the most appropriate method for your sample and downstream applications. For the EV isolation itself, there is a clear difference in methodologies when it comes to EV concentration and purity, as shown in a study where they compared five different methodologies. Ultracentrifugation was found to be particularly poor at isolating EVs from urine, resulting in a low concentration and purity compared to the other four methods. Of these methods, size exclusion chromatography using the AQEV original 70 nanometer columns performed the best, showing the highest concentration and purity of EVs in isolates with the highest enrichment of EV marker tetraspanins. The QEV single 70 nanometer columns were also found to be superior in another study which pre-concentrated urine using ultrafiltration. Of note, QEV Gen 2 columns are available to accommodate a wide range of sample loading volumes from 150 microliters to 100 mil, made using high performance resin exclusively designed for EV isolation. Once you've isolated your EVs, the next step is determining whether they may be used for biomarkers. In 2009, two mRNAs were identified as being potential prostate cancer biomarkers, and they were found in urine EVs of prostate cancer patients. 
Since this discovery, numerous large studies have confirmed these results, identifying these biomarkers as useful tools when determining whether to perform biopsies and in predicting disease progression. Such success has helped turn these EV biomarkers into an FDA breakthrough device designated diagnostic test, making them perhaps the most successful EV biomarkers to date. Other studies have reported promising results for EV urine biomarker discovery, for pathologies from diabetic nephropathy to lupus, with EV urine biomarker studies increasing year on year. However, despite the key success in prostate cancer EVs, these other biomarkers have yet to attain the success marked by replication between studies. There are three key questions for urine EV research that, when answered, may help to propel urine biomarker studies to address the shortfall. The first is the question of what to do with uromodulin. Depleting uromodulin is key to maximising EV yield and purity, yet the current methods both have drawbacks. Can a new improved method be identified to aid in the effective, undamaged urine EV recovery? Next comes the question of normalisation. As we mentioned earlier, urine concentration and content varies widely between patients, depending on factors such as hydration and health status. An agreed upon panel of normalisation factors would benefit reproducibility in the field, helping to reduce the impact of differences in individual samples. Finally, will the field move away from ultracentrifugation and towards better technologies? Ultracentrifugation has been shown to be poor at recovering EVs from urine, yet is still widely used. Switching to QEV columns, which have been shown to be a reliable system to isolate pure EVs from urine, would likely improve the concordance between studies and improve intersample variation within studies. Improving standardization of urine collection and normalization, combined with improved, streamlined EV isolation, could help these biomarker studies make the jump from bench to bedside.